Hello everyone, I hope you guys are all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming to the weekly Minx Monday Q&A. Before we get started, let me share the bag that I'm currently rocking, and that is the Louis Vuitton push accessoire in the monogram canvas. All right, so grab a coffee, grab a tea, let's start workouts, let's work, let's do laundry, whatever it is that you're doing, come join me. We have some awesome topics to cover today. Starting with the first question from Vonnie Brown. Barney's New York just filed for bankruptcy. High-end retailers are succumbing to the so-called Amazon effect. Being able to go into bricks and mortar Barney's or Neiman's or even a Louis Vuitton or dare I say Chanel seems to be getting lesser and lesser an option. Question, do you think that this is signaling the end of the high-end luxury handbag shopping experience? This is an awesome question and it's hard to say, but of course only time will tell. Uh, but there is a part of me that feels that it might do just the exact opposite, that maybe more and more people might seek out the luxury boutiques because it is an experience. Now, I'm not saying that that's always the case, but it can also be viewed as like a treat yourself, pamper yourself type of day with the whole wine and dine effect. But like I said before, that might not always be the case because you also hear of some sales associates that want to get you in and out the door within five minutes. It's like, hey, how are you? What are you looking for? I found it. Let me ring you up and you're on about your day. And that doesn't make for a memorable type of shopping trip or anything like that. If anything, it leaves a bad taste in your mouth, you know, so it really depends on, um, you know, on the type of experience because some people haven't gotten that type of treatment. You know, but even though I do like boutique shopping and I think it's fun, I also appreciate that more and more brands are leaning towards e-commerce because you have a lot more access, especially if you live somewhere that you aren't near a boutique or you don't have that store in your state or anything like that, you have a lot more access. So the convenience factor alone, I feel is a major, major game changer and it's a major, major plus, you know, but like I said before, only time will tell. But I would like to hear your thoughts. What do you guys think? Do you feel that more and more people might be leaning towards solely shopping online? Or do you feel that more and more people might seek out those luxury boutiques so that they can have that experience? Let us know in the comment section down below. But fantastic question and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Bronimus Rex. Louis Vuitton used to describe themselves as being in the business of making classics. Now it seems like there is a new interpretation of the monogram with every new collection. Do you think that this will hurt how the brand is perceived? Excellent question. And I don't think so. Of course, anything is possible, but unless they completely get rid of their classics, I don't see that happening because for the most part, the way that I feel is that Louis Vuitton, not only do they set trends, they follow trends, but they have tried and succeeded at casting a wide net when it comes to handbags. So there's something for each and every generation. And that's very smart on their behalf because it's made them very lucrative, you know, so they have the classics that are staples to the fashion house, even though they are hard to find, but still they keep the classics that are staples to the house that have been successful decade after decade and they have pieces with a punch for those seeking more. So I guess what I'm saying is what might be considered funky today might become a classic tomorrow, you know, so you never know. And as a Louis Vuitton lover, I appreciate the fact that they still have those classics, you know, those pieces that kind of put them where they are on the map today, you know, the, the most successful luxury company on the planet. But at the same time, I don't want them to get too, too crazy, but I understand where they're coming from because they have to keep up with the trends. They have to keep up. They have to stay relevant. In order for a company to be successful, I feel that they have to stay relevant, but the fact that they still keep those classics, as I said before, is incredibly smart on their behalf. So that's the way that I feel, but I would love to hear your thoughts on this. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comment section down below, but fantastic question and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Lila Rush. Can you do a review of your Fendi Mama Baguette? Do you find it useful? Do you like it enough to recommend us to get it? All right, so I did bring it out so we have a little bit more eye candy. This is the Fendi Mama Baguette that I picked up a couple of months ago and I absolutely love this bag. I use it a lot more than I anticipated. It is crazy, crazy comfortable. I'm able to fit all of my essentials in here. And uh, I really like this strap because it does have adjustments. So that way you can make it a little bit shorter or a little bit longer, you know, whatever it is that you need. And uh, this strap also doesn't dig into my skin or anything like that. It doesn't roll off of my shoulder, regardless of the type of uh, clothing that I am wearing. Now, the craziest thing about this bag is the fact that it's mostly all fabric and it still stays in the upright position. You know, so when it's completely empty, it still stays like this. And that makes me super happy because you guys know I'm not one to, um, to really gravitate towards bags that turn into a beautiful mess, like if they don't have an organizer or anything like that. 
And the fact that this one just stays in the upright position, I think is awesome. Now there are a couple cons that I have to throw out there just in case. Uh, the first one being that because it is that same fabric, you know, as time goes by, the more and more that you use it, I know that this is going to be prone to wearing on the corners here, you know? So if I'm not too careful, I might start to see the, the threads or the fabric start to kind of fray. So that's one thing to know, but so far so good. And the other con, when you are out and about and you do have all of your essentials and you go to put this bag on the crook of your arm and you go to retrieve, you know, your wallet or another small leather good, because of this fabric, poor fabric, I'm blaming everything uh, on it, but it starts to, everything starts to gravitate towards the middle. So it kind of starts to sag and it can be somewhat fussy to retrieve your item. Everything starts to go right in here and everything starts to get a little bit jumbled, you know? But uh, once again, I just wanted to throw that out there just in case, but if you, if you like the pros and the cons don't bother you, I definitely recommend this handbag. Uh, as I said before, I use it a lot more than I anticipated. I I actually have it in my rotation a lot more than I do my Speedy 25 Bandolier. You guys know how much I love that bag and the fact that this one I end up using more and more. I constantly gravitate towards it just because it's such, I feel like it's so carefree. It's so easy to use and I don't have to think about it. Plus the fact that I didn't have to break the bank makes it a little bit easier for me to, to use and I don't have to put it in this protective bubble. The, the famous bubble that I've talked about many of times, you know, and even though I didn't get the best price on it because um, I paid a little bit more than other people did before it became incredibly popular, but still I felt like I got my Fendi fix without breaking the bank. So I absolutely love it. And once again, if you appreciate the pros that I mentioned and the cons don't bother you, then I highly recommend going for the Fendi Mama Baguette. So I don't know if that ends up helping out, but fantastic question and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Clara Parker. You hear of much talk with Louis Vuitton discontinuing so many classic items. And so far, I'm not seeing them completely doing away with them. I'm not complaining, but why do you think those soon to be discontinued pieces are still around? Do you think that they will eventually get rid of them? This is an awesome question. And I'd like to think that maybe they changed their minds, but of course they have gotten rid of some pieces such as the Eva clutch. Now, the one conclusion that I come to, this is just, this is just an assumption, you know, don't hate me for it, but there is a part of me that feels that it might be a marketing tactic. You know, that it's a marketing tactic because they have us waiting with bated breath for these items that have like a two to three month back order, or they create this frenzy so that way they end up selling those soon to be discontinued pieces. Meanwhile, they don't have any intentions of getting rid of them. I have no idea. And if it is a marketing tactic, all they're doing is pushing more and more people towards the pre-love market. And sometimes that doesn't work out either because if it is a hard to find item, if it is a classic piece that you can't end up getting in the boutique, then the prices are astronomical on the pre-love market. But the reason why I feel that this might be what they're trying to do is because you also hear how Louis Vuitton tries to compete with Hermes. Now with Hermes, I have to give them credit where credit is due and they have perfected their strategy when it comes to the Birkin and the Kelly and how they end up marketing those two handbags. So Louis Vuitton tries to do the same thing, but instead of sticking to one or two items, they do that with their handbags and their small leather goods alike and they make it impossible to find. So I have no idea. I could be completely wrong. These are just my assumptions, but it does make you wonder, right? But do I think that they'll completely get rid of them? I don't think so. I think if anything, they will continue to just slow production down on them. So if before they had 20 items that were available in the United States, for example, now they're only going to have three. That way they can really focus and they can really showcase the new designs, the new textures, uh, the new leathers and pieces with higher price points than the canvas. But once again, these are just my two cents. The only time will tell, but I would love to hear your thoughts on this. What do you guys think? Do you think it's just a frenzy that they create? Do you think it's a marketing tactic? Uh, and do you think that they're going to complete get rid of these classics? Let us know in the comment section down below. But fantastic question and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Talia. Hopefully I said that correctly. We've heard your best deals. Have you had any bad ones? Um, all right. So I don't know. Well, I don't know if you can consider it a bad deal. I certainly consider it a bad deal. But many, many moons ago, I purchased a Gucci bag on eBay for $575, which ended up being a replica. And I went through this long drawn out process with eBay to try to get my money back and to no avail. And what made me probably the most irritated is that when I got the item, 
when I got the item, it was a blatant replica. It wasn't what was pictured or anything like that. So when I contacted the seller, I said, this isn't the bag that was on the listing. This is a replica. And mind you, I hadn't gotten the item authenticated. I didn't ask questions. And looking back on it, there were a ton of red flags that I didn't really pay attention to, you know, because I was fairly new to this whole luxury goods thing. And I took everything at face value. If someone said it was authentic, it was authentic type of thing. But anyways, um, the seller came back and said, no, that's not the bag that I sent you. You must have switched it. They totally put it on me and eBay sided with them. I was so irritated. I felt like I was bitter for the longest time, you know, so it left a horrible taste in my mouth, but it also taught me that moving forward, you know, I should ask questions and get the item authenticated. So I don't blame anybody but myself, you know, because even though I felt duped, you know, I should have done my homework type of thing. So it has definitely helped me moving forward, you know, whenever I go onto the, the pre-love market. But uh, yeah, <laughs> that is definitely what I consider to be the worst deal. And my girlfriend at the time, she ended up taking the bag. I was like, I'm not gonna use it, you know? And I just, I was so, not angry because that seems a little extreme, but I was just, ugh, <laughs> you know, at myself because I felt, I felt like I had been swindled. <laughs> so, anyways, that's what I think is my definitely my worst deal. But I would love to know, have any of you guys had any bad deals or deal? Let us know in the comment section down below. Hopefully you haven't, but if you have, let us know. But fantastic question and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Lovelyn. Can I hear your opinion on the Celine Nano luggage bag and the Pump Springs Mini? I know you have both and I like both, but I only need to get one for my birthday this month. Hubby is happy to buy one for me. Well, first and foremost, happy early birthday. So here is the Celine Nano luggage tote and the Louis Vuitton Palm Springs mini backpack. I love them both. They are small, but they pack a punch. Now, when it comes to the Louis Vuitton Palm Springs Mini, I feel that it is very versatile because of the straps that it comes with. You can either use it as a backpack, you can use it crossbody on your shoulder, or you can hand carry it. And I also like the fact that it does have the color treated leather, so you don't have to worry about the type of weather that you're going to be using this in. Now, the one thing to know is that I find, maybe some of you might feel differently, but I find that uh, it's a little bit harder to retrieve your items just because of the zippers. Sometimes they end up getting caught and the fact that this one has a little cover over the zipper, I feel makes it a little bit harder, you know, but like I said before, some of you guys might experience something different, but I think that this bag is awesome. It's very, very comfortable. You know, the, the straps don't dig into your shoulder or anything like that. And the fact that the straps also have adjustments, I think is awesome. That way you're not stuck with a one size fits all. Now with the Celine Nano luggage toe, I actually find that it's a little bit easier to retrieve your items just because of the type of opening that it has. You can either leave the back open, but it also comes with a zipper. So you have an option to make it a little bit more secure. Um, I also love the leather because I find it to be very, very durable. I haven't had any issues with wear and tear. I haven't had any issues with scratches or anything like that. And usually when it comes to Celine, uh, when it comes to the luggage line, sometimes they end up kind of wrinkling and sagging on the sides. But because of the Nano, because of its size, um, you don't really experience that. I also think that this bag is somewhat versatile because you can hand carry it. You can put it on the crook of your arm. And it also comes with a removable strap that allows you to use a crossbody or on your shoulder. However, that same strap is not very user friendly because it is a one size fits all. So you can end up tying a knot to make it shorter, but but for the most part, you don't have as much play as say maybe the Palm Springs Mini to be able to have the adjustments. So I think both of these are wonderful and I think both of them definitely pack a punch as I mentioned earlier. It's just a matter of which one speaks to your heart the most. So I don't know if this ends up helping out, but I'm super, super excited for you. Once again, happy early birthday and congratulations on whichever one you end up getting. But fantastic question and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Megan McConnell. When you are carrying only a flat card holder, what do you do with your cash? I only carry about four cards and some bills on a day-to-day -day basis, so a full wallet is overkill. I want a small leather good that will just hold some cash when I'm using a small card holder, but I can't find anything that's the right size. Um, all right, so I did bring out a few, so we have a little bit of eye candy, but when it comes to flat card holders, such as the Louis Vuitton Monogram Eclipse one, I actually prefer to have my cash at the very top. It makes it a little bit more accessible, and that way I just have 
have the bare essentials of my wallet on the exterior of the card holder. So I always end up putting it up here and I can carry anywhere from five to 10 different bills. Of course, the more bills that I carry, the more fussy that it might be to remove uh, the cards. And sometimes I will also use the very top four receipts. So that's what how I prefer to use it. Now the others that I wanted to share with you, I know you have heard me talk about it a million times, but it is the Chanel Eau Zip coin purse. Now with this one, it is still very compact. You can end up carrying, you know, the same uh, amount that you would carry in a full size wallet. But in this one, um, I like the compartments because that way, if you wanted to just have your cash in one compartment, you just want to have your wallet essentials on the other, maybe receipts on the other, you have that option. So I feel that it gives it a little bit more organization. And on here, I feel like you can definitely fit a lot more um, bills if need be. But as I've said in other videos, you do have to fold up the cash a couple times. Now, some people might find this fussy. So the Chanel Oz coin purse. And the other one is the Gucci leather card case. Now this one has more wallet features, but it is still in a compact size because you do have four credit card slots. You have two at the top, two at the bottom. You also have two slip pockets, one back here and one back here. You also have a zippered compartment for coin if need be, and one last compartment for bills or receipts. So you definitely have even more organization than the Chanel Oz coin purse, but this one is a little bit thicker. And in comparison to the Chanel Oz coin purse, Purse, you can see that it is a little bit bigger and of course it is a lot thicker than a flat card holder. There's also one more that I want to throw in the mix, the Louis Vuitton clay or the key pouch because on this one it does have the zippered compartment so you have a little bit more security and you can end up fitting those four cards plus your cash in here quite nicely. So I felt like this is another one that um, definitely would be perfect to use as a wallet. There are three others that I wanted to uh, recommend that I don't have within my collection. The first one is the Louis Vuitton on Rosalie coin pouch. The Louis Vuitton Victorine wallet. And the Louis Vuitton Zoe wallet. All three of those are very compact, but they still have the features that you might be looking for. So I don't know if this ends up helping out, but good luck deciding. And if any of you guys have any recommendations, let us know in the comment section down below. But fantastic question, and hopefully I was able to answer it. And the last question from 50 States Traveler, what are your thoughts about the Gucci Marmont Mini versus the YSL wallet on chain, especially the wear and tear? I can't decide which one to get. All right, so before I get any further, let me insert a picture of both of these bags right now. Both of these are beautiful. Both of them have awesome price points, especially for being all leather handbags, and they are both incredibly versatile. Now, when it comes to the Marmont line in general, personally, I'm not a fan just because it does have a heart on the backside, and many of you know how I feel about it, but I can still appreciate that with the Mini, you can carry the bare essentials, and like I said before, it is versatile because you can take off the chain, and from what I have heard, a lot of people say that uh, when it comes to the Marmont line, uh, the leather is incredibly durable, so I think that's awesome. Now, with the YSL, I've said it before, for, that with their pebbled leather, it is incredibly durable. I feel like you can use these items for years and they still look like the day that you got them. At least that's what I experienced with both of the pieces that I've had from this fashion house. Now, even though I do like the wallet on chain and I think it's beautiful, I actually had it on my wish list years ago, but I decided against it. And the reason I decided against it is because, and this might sound kind of silly, um, I wanted to have the wallet feature but I want it to cater more to my handbag needs. I know, I know, it's a wallet, just like the name states, and the YSL has quite a few credit card slots, you know, which I think is awesome, but I feel like once you start putting items inside, it can get really bulky really, really quickly. So I guess it just comes down to personal preference, and it really comes down to what it is that, that you're looking for because both of them are incredibly durable. And if you want something that you can fit the bare essentials and you can still have a little bit more uh, play with it, then I would go for the Gucci Marmont. But if you want something that caters more to your wallet needs and is still very durable, then I would go for the YSL. So I don't know if this ends up helping out, uh, but good luck deciding and congratulations on your soon to be bag. But fantastic question and hopefully I was able to answer it. All right, you guys, so that does it for Minks Monday Q&A. I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope I was able to help. You guys had some awesome questions this week. For this week's lineup, you will see me one other time. But again, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I'll see you guys later. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day.